It is our pleasure to be joined by Aoife Cook, a former member of the Arkansas Tech University Women's Cross Country Program, who has gone on to reach one of the ultimate pinnacles in all of athletics, and that is she will compete in the Olympics later this summer, representing her home country of Ireland. And Aoife, first of all, very much, just thank you for taking some time with us today. Thank you, delighted to be here. Absolutely. You know, to, to do something like reaching the Olympics, uh, there has to be an origin point for that. What was it that first attracted you and really hooked you on running? Uh, I've always been interested in it. I, I kind of started running when I was 11, so very young. Um, and then I, I just kind of, I did it for fun at the beginning, um, but I found I was improving with, when I was training properly. Um, and, and when I got to 15, 16, I kind of was, was winning medals. Um, so, you know, um, I, I was doing quite well at it. Um, and then I got the scholarship over to um, Arkansas Tech when I was when I was 17, um, trained over there, uh, ran cross country mostly. And um, again, um, did, did quite well um, at, at the cross country there um, over um, in the conference and regional championships. And then um, I came home. Um, unfortunately, I ended up coming home early because of injuries and things like that spend a little bit of time out um but it was always something you know I, I i always loved running and i missed it when i wasn't able to do it so um when i when i got myself healthy and, and better again um i got back into it in 2015 and again just steadily started improving and um i suppose it was a couple of years after that that you know i kind of started thinking that if if i really put my head down and, and really worked hard with it that, that i could possibly make it to the olympics and you have, you know, it, you're a little bit humble when you say you did pretty well here at Arkansas Tech. You did things uh, that had never been done before here and, and haven't been done since, including uh, finishing ninth in the nation at, at the national meet. Um, as you think back on that time, not just from running, but going to school and, and living in Russellville uh, for a couple of years, what are some of your reflections of Arkansas Tech? I loved, I loved my time there. Um, I made some really, really good friends at Arkansas Tech, friends that I, 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 I still keep in touch with, you know, actually one, one friend of mine that, um, she, she was my roommate in Caraway in my second year, um, Andrea Allen, and she's coming up here to, to Utah where I am at the moment um, to visit me in a, in a few weeks time. So, you know, we're, we're still keeping in touch and, um, and it's great. Um, so I, I have really fond memories of, of Arkansas Tech. Um, you know, I, I felt like everyone was so friendly, made me feel really at home. I guess I suffered a little bit with homesickness when I first got over there, but you know, um, the, the people really, you know, helped me to, to make me feel at home at Arkansas Tech. Um, and I loved the running there, you know, the training over there. And, and as you said, I, I achieved quite a lot um, for the college there. Um, I won my conference championship and the regional championship um, in my second year over there and, and then ninth at the nationals. So, um, you know, it, it really helped me to um, improve my running there as well. You mentioned the injuries that, uh, that began to creep in on your running career and the period of time there where you weren't running competitively. During that time, did, did it ever cross your mind or did, were you, did you ever become resigned to the idea that you might never run competitively again? I did kind of, um, you know, when, when the injuries were really bad and it, it didn't seem like um, anything was, was going to get better anytime soon. Um, I sort of did at that point for a little while and, you know, it was a really kind of frustrating time for me because I, I had done so well up to that point, um, you know, during my college time in Arkansas and I actually went home and I, I, I finished third at my own national championships um, that year as well and, and, um, and I ran for the, uh, in the European uh, championships that year also and, and uh, so it felt like you know everything was going great and then these injuries happened so um it was really frustrating for a while so for a couple of years I did kind of think look it's it's over there, there's no chance anymore but um I just started looking after my health quite a lot more my diet and, and things like that and um and doing kind of stuff in the gym to to help my injuries and eventually um it started improving so I, I got back to kind of just running recreationally I guess um for a while and you know when that kind of you know felt okay I didn't feel any any um pain or anything like that 
was when I kind of decided to get back properly. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a long process, but um, got there eventually. You know, it, it's one thing to reach the pinnacle of any pursuit one time, which you did while you're here at Arkansas Tech, you know, among the best runners in the nation at that time. What is the hardest part of kind of ascending that mountain for a second time and getting back to that elite level? Um, I, I suppose at the beginning when I got back, I, I wasn't thinking so much about the Olympics when I first got back or, or, you know, anything. I just started competing at a local level. Um, so I really enjoyed that, you know, just, just, um, you know, mingling with other runners and, um, you know, it's, it, there's a great community there in, in the running as well. So I enjoyed that. Um, and I suppose at the beginning, I just, I just kind of wanted to to win my local races and, and probably improve on my times that I was getting there. Um, but I suppose, um, as I said, a couple of years into it, I just found my, my, my times were, were getting better and better. And I just kind of thought to myself, if I focus, I can do it. Um, I didn't see it as, as much of a chore, to be honest, or, you know, it wasn't a sacrifice, so to speak, because it's something I really enjoy doing and and it's just that one thing for me that it's um it's kind of all or nothing I guess <laughs> I couldn't say to myself I'm just going to go back and um and you know do it do it for fun because I know for me um I, I'll always want to kind of do better um at every race so you know just that mentality with it I think eventually brought me um to this position you know now that you have built yourself to this level um, at two different points in your life it, it occurs to me um, that process has probably provided you with a good bit of wisdom about uh, running and life and how they intersect you know as you look back on it now what are some of the qualities that you believe make a great distance runner um patience is is a big one um i think with distance running you, you have to be patient um especially with the marathon um, because it's it's a long way so so you can't start the race off too fast you know if you go out too fast it's not going to finish it's not going to end well um so you kind of have to you know hold yourself back a little be patient um and just trust that that things will work out if, if you stick to the plan so um i suppose those are the two big things and and, and those are things i would have learned I guess, you know, during my injuries and everything and, and trying to get back after the injuries, it's, it's patience, you know, you, you can't push yourself, you can't push your body, you know, further than it's able to go at any point. So, so you have to listen to that. You have to listen to, to what your body is capable of. And um, if you do that, I, I guess eventually you'll get to where you want to be. Patience was important for all of us these last 15 or 18 months <laughs> as we went through uh, this worldwide COVID-19 pandemic. Talk to me a little bit about the mental test of continuing to prepare yourself and train yourself and, and really discipline yourself at an Olympic level without any guarantee that either the qualifying events or the Olympics themselves were going to happen. Yeah, it was, it was really hard at times, um, especially last year, because I guess, you know, obviously the, the Olympics were meant to happen last year, but they were postponed. So initially I was supposed to do a marathon last year in April, the Vienna marathon. Um, and I had been training for that. And um, obviously that was canceled due to COVID. Um, and that was at the beginning of COVID. So I guess we didn't really have an idea of, you know, how long it was going to go on for, what was going to happen. So I was really disappointed when that was canceled. And um, I was just really frustrated because at the time, I guess the, the Olympics were still planned to go ahead in, in that August. And I just didn't have a race to run to try and qualify. Um, then obviously um, COVID kind of uh, lingered for a lot longer than, than people thought. And um, the, the Olympics were, were eventually postponed to this year. So I... Um, I, I kept training throughout the summer. Um, I kind of um, had a few races in mind in the fall, um, but again, they all ended up getting canceled um, due to COVID. Um, so it, it was, there, there were times where I kind of thought to myself, is there a point, you know, like, you know, I, I can't keep doing this if, if things are gonna keep getting canceled and, you know, I have no nothing to, to aim for or to run. Um, but it was kind of in late uh, late um, fall last year, I came across the race that I ended up doing, the, the Cheshire Marathon. 
Um, they, they had put in all the COVID protocols, really small race, you know, just, I think, 200 runners altogether. Um, so it looked good, you know, on paper that, you know, they, they had all the right protocols in place, you know, that it wasn't a race of thousands of people that, that could potentially be cancelled. Um, so I decided to enter it. And I just trained then throughout the winter for that. Um, I guess I just got it into my head that, you know, that it is going ahead. I, I just didn't let myself think that this was going to be cancelled. Uh, it was just a case that if it does get cancelled, I'll deal with it at that point. So um, I just trained as if it was going ahead and, and thankfully it did. And, and it did, and not only did it happen, but you ran the qualifying time to be able to make it to the Olympics that day. Is there any one moment, any mental image of that day, of, of the day that you qualified for the Olympics that you feel like you'll carry with you for the rest of your life? Um, yeah, there, I mean, there, there was a few. I mean, um, I suppose going into the race, um, just 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 running um around i guess it was different it was different to kind of my usual race situations because um it was laps it was it was it was a few laps of, of kind of kind of country roads you know um a lot smaller than than the big city marathons that that we would normally be used to but um there was a commentator there um every lap so you know he he would cheer every time we were going around um and, and you know he he was rooting for me you know you know I was the first lady coming around so you know he 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 made sure to mention that every time so that was really nice and then crossing the finish line was it was just incredible I mean you know that that was definitely a, a hugely memorable moment and I just remember going back to my car and to my phone then afterwards and there was just so many messages and voicemails and <laughs> it was a little bit overwhelming but it was incredible to to see all of the support that, that is awesome. That is, that is a moment to remember for a lifetime, no doubt. Mm -hmm. And now that you've made it and you are going to be an Olympian and you're on your way to, to, to Tokyo here in just a few couple of months, um, what is your preparation like between now and then? And what are your goals for once you arrive? So I'm actually, um, I, I just came over to Utah now. Um, I, I arrived last week um, for altitude training and um, to train in the warmer climate. Um, so I'm at high altitude. I'm up at like 7,000 feet. So um, that should help me to, to get stronger aerobically um, before the marathon. And then also just getting used to the war warmer climate because it doesn't get very warm at all in Ireland. Um, so <laughs> I'll get used to the heat here before going to Japan. So I should be traveling straight from here over to Japan about a week before um, my race. Um, and then I'll, I'll kind of just, um, just, just take it easy the week before the race um, in Japan and, and then um, hopefully get the race day. Um, I'll be hoping to improve on my time in, in the marathon over there. Um, kind of position wise, um, I'm not too sure yet. If I could get in the top 20, I would be really happy. Um, I guess for me, this is my, my first um, experience of running internationally in, in quite a long time. So um, I'm going to just, you know, soak up the experience of this one. And um, really, I, I, I'm pretty young still by marathon standards. So, so I think, you know, just get the experience in this one. And, and I would like to run maybe in the World Championships next year in Oregon and, and potentially make it to the next Olympics in Paris in, in 2024 and, and hopefully have a lot more experience under my belt and, and be able to put in, um, you know, a really good performance then. Well, Aoife, congratulations on this amazing achievement. Congratulations on the opportunity to represent your home country. And please know that uh, as you tow that starting line in Tokyo, there's gonna be a lot of people uh, back here at Arkansas Tech University that are going to be cheering for you and, and sending you well wishes. Awesome. Thank you very much. That is Aoife Cook, former member of the Arkansas Tech University Women's Cross Country Program and Olympian. Thank you very much for tuning in today.